So to, to kind of go back then to this idea of universal grammar, so this is a slide that I showed you before uh, when we were discussing Pinker, um, to go through their basic uh, idea about universal grammar and the meaning for it. And you know, their claim was that the human mind is designed in a way that allows language to be learned, right? That the human mind is designed in a way that language allows language to be learned, and that and the, and the basic, you know, you know, the, the reasoning is that the language structures don't come from experience, but rather they they must be in children from the very start, right? You know, they use as evidence this universal grammar that you know seems to be this universal thing that all humans have, and they conclude it must be pre-programmed. It must be in this language module, and. You know, and the warrant here is that complexity in the mind must have been pre-programmed, cannot and cannot arise spontaneously, right? Because how could it just, you know, there's this very complex structure of universal grammar. How could it just appear naturally, right? And that's and this is their reasoning that there's this this, this complexity has to be pre-programmed, and therefore the human mind is designed um, in a way to allow us to learn language. Deacon is looking at the same evidence, universal grammar, but taking a different direction, right? He's got a different warrant, and with the warrant here is that universal grammar is universal in the same way that the dorsal fins of different types of marine animals are universal. That even though these different dorsal, you know, he talks about sharks and dolphins and and how they all developed these dorsal fins, but they didn't develop them in the same way. They all kind of got to that, converged on that solution because that's sort of, you know, given the, the constraints of the way, you know, water functions and the way swimming is, that the dorsal fin is really the best solution. And so there, the, what he's saying is that the universal grammar doesn't have to be pre-programmed because it, it can actually emerge spontaneously based on the constraints that all humans or that all language has to have in in order to develop, right? So that that these so that there's there's these what's universal is not the the structures of language. What's universal are the constraints that limit the way language can develop within the human mind, right? So he, you know he's emphasizing how the child's brain exerts this selection pressure on the development of language and so that language has to develop in a certain way that matches the learning styles of human children but that also matches the the requirement of symbolic learning over indexical learning right and that and that w so that the what seems like a universal grammar that's pre-programmed in the brain is actually a set of universal constraints on the way language has to, de de to develop given the way human brains function and the way symbolic uh, relationships are structured. Right? So he's, he's kind of reversing this, in, he, he's re reversing um, the, I guess, the cause and effect in a sense. See, he, it's not that the brains are, are creating the, 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 the universal grammar. The, uh, or, or the, yeah, he's saying that the, it's the language that's sort of reacting to the way brains are already structured in order to create the universal grammar spontaneously, uh, or, or, or through the sort of process of evolution and, and natural selection, right? Um, so, so in the end, then for Deacon, you know, this idea of a language module does not make sense, nor does a kind of general intelligence make sense. But what does make sense for him is a kind of consistent set of learning biases, he calls them, that shape language to fit what the brain can accommodate, right? And so the, there are these universals of language that are, in fact, universals of the way human brains are already structured. Um, and so we don't have a language instinct, but rather a particular learning bias toward symbolic reference. And so, so that really becomes then the question of you know, symbolic reference, symbolic learning, and how that developed within the human brain, right? And, and you know, as we've seen with the chimpanzees, it requires this sort of, this sort of leap, this sort of change of perspective. And the, the big question then for Deacon is how 
does this change of perspective come about? How, you know, in, in the course of primate evolution, did that first primate all of a sudden make that leap uh, into symbolic thinking away from indexical thinking? And so that becomes the new question for Deacon. It's no longer the question of, you know, how does this language module develop, right? So he's, he's, he's rejecting the idea of a language module, but he is replacing the problem with a new problem of, you know, how, you know, how has the human brain evolved to become good at this kind of um, symbolic, uh, th seeing things in terms of symbolic reference, uh, and, and, you know, what would, what would lead to that shift, right?